I also steal a lot. <laughs> like if if I if I hear hear something I like, I, I try and think, why do I like it? Is it the rhythm? Is it the sounds of the chords? Um, and then I might try and work out my own thing. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, Gemma Farrell's great, uh, a great saxophone player, composer, band leader, uh, has many bands. Gemma Farrell Quintet uh, runs the Artemis Orchestra and teaches and is a mother and uh, has a family, has a new house and a new, uh, <laughs> a new, uh, a new uh, music room. So, uh, yes. yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for yeah, thanks for uh, agreeing to this. So we'll just uh, we'll kick off with the first question. So, uh, why do you have music in your life? Um, well, I started um, playing the saxophone uh, just before I turned ten, and um, like it sort of started just like any other. Like I, I thought it was just an extracurricular, another extracurricular thing at the time. Um, but eventually enough people told me that they thought I could be good enough. And um, there's always that question going into high school you get of like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And um, I like my parents were sort of saying like, you know, say, say a musician. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to say that purely because probably because they were telling me to say that. <laughs> right. um, but um, anyway, um, eventually I sort of realised that I, I did actually want to do that and sort of started saying, like, from year seven that that's what I wanted to do when I grew, grew up. And, um, yeah, it um, it makes me happy more than anything else. Playing music, listening to music makes me very, very happy. Um, and it also, like, being a musician keeps me motivated. Um, I've always got projects in my head, like things that I have yet to achieve that I want to do. Um, it has and can be, and a, a particularly um, this is probably uh, a, a you know a reflection also on what's happening at the moment with uh, the lack of government funding with artists. Um, but like it, it can be incredibly frustrating to be a musician, uh, which you can probably relate it, re relate to. Yeah, uh, it's uh, you know the the. The, there's a severe lack of full-time jobs um, and, you know, that lack of security and frustration has sometimes made me wonder whether or, or not it's really worth it. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it makes me happy. And there's there's no bigger compliment than when an audience member said, like, oh, I love your music, P particularly if it's something that I've written, like that's like, that's an amazing compliment. Mm. Um, but even just like they come to the show and, and they, they love it. There's, yeah, no bigger compliment. Have you ever, I mean, have you ever thought of doing other things and have you ever done any other things? Not really. No, like I've, I've thought about like, you know, things that might be interesting to do if I didn't do this, but like, no, I mean, the only other job I've had, well, I've had two other jobs other than musician and that's, they were jobs while I was studying music. Like I, I worked at my dad's bakery <laughs> and I, I worked oh, at they call some early mornings. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I worked at, um, I worked at a call center in Amsterdam and, you know, surveying people on the television that they watched. Um, but uh, yeah, no, not really. Like every time I've sort of contemplated it, I've sort of thought, well, what else would I do? Like nothing else would, I, I sort of, I, I'm, I think I'm a very goal oriented, oriented person and I'm not really someone who would probably just be satisfied going to work and coming home. Like I, I need to play, I need to have my ideas. And, and my I think, I think that's, yeah, I think that's a good thing with music as well that you can, you, you can set all your own goals. You don't sort of have, yeah. um, I mean, you can get teachers to set goals and things, but um, if you are motivated, you can set those goals and you can accomplish, men, com accomplish them and then you can set more goals and it's just, and it's ongoing forever. Yeah. I think um, like what what's interesting about the period of time that we're living in now is that like 
Um, I, I now, as a professional working for myself, set my own goals. So, like, if I'm like, oh, you know, I want to get better at playing standards, I'll make a band that only plays standards and I'll organise some gigs. And I actually did that right before this virus hit, like started a band just for learning standards, um, you know, and, and I'll go, oh, I want to play with these people. So I'll set up some gigs and um, and that'll, that'll be my goal, my thing to work towards, to compose new music towards. Um, and like it was interesting like being a teacher during this time period like I, I teach a band that was supposed to play at Montreux Jazz Festival in June mm. and like the first blow was um was that the education minister said that like no international school travel um and you know so first Montreux got cancelled and it was like oh man you know that's a huge hit but like at least we've still got these performances to look forward to. And yeah. like the, you know, as they all started to get cancelled, it's it's sort of, it's really hard to keep people motivated without goals. Like I, I was, oh, yeah, I was just finding it hard as performances were getting cancelled to keep students motivated. Um, yeah. But you know, I mean, that we've still got, future performances to look forward to that they're all practicing for hopefully so yep. <laughs> yeah well <laughs> you can only hope all right <laughs> you can only hope yeah <laughs> um, well maybe it, uh, we'll get on to the the second question so uh, how do you make music uh, so for myself um, as you said primarily a saxophone player um, and I'm I've never picked a main saxophone like I I've had people try to push me in the direction of or like teachers particularly when I lived in Amsterdam had like lecturers sort of telling me what saxophones they thought I should play and, but like ultimately I, I like the sound of all of them and I try and use the sounds of all of them if I'm composing or performing um yeah um and again like if I enjoy playing with a certain person or I want to explore a certain sounds, like, oh, I've never really played that much with, uh, you know, I've never played, I don't know, let's say vibraphone um, and there's a cool vibraphone player in town, like, let's let's set up some gigs with that person. Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, and I... I compose um, on the piano because um, if I if I compose on the saxophone, I tend to uh, just come out with stuff that I've practiced. And you know, sometimes I might want that sound, but a lot of the times I want to try new things. Yeah. Um. um I also steal a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like if if I if I hear a, hear something I like, I, I try and think, why do I like it? Is it the rhythm? Is it the sounds of the chords? Um, and then I might try and work out my own thing based on it. Um, but, yeah, composing new things for new settings or, or for a particular setting um, and, um, and yeah, for myself playing the saxophone. Um, but, yeah, my, my main group's my quintet, so that's sort of the, the, the main uh, outlet I have for making new music. Yeah. Cool. Third question. Uh, what uh, excites you musically right now? Okay. Um, so I've sort of got a few answers to this question. Excellent. Um, but, uh, like there's still a lot of music that I haven't really properly uh, listened to. So the, the music, what, it, what excites me is the music that I still have to explore. Um, and at the moment I'm listening to a lot of really great local stuff, um, which, you know, it's always awesome listening to local stuff, like to, to know that we're capable of such a huge level. Um, yeah, I'm listening to a lot of, um, Grievous Bodily Calm, Cynic Doki, The Biology of Plants. So they're sort of bands that aren't jazz bands, but Mm. they're, people who have all they've all, all involved people who have been heavily who are jazz musicians or heavily influenced by jazz um 
the sirens big band um and then like there's my uh traditional favorites that i still listen to like lee morgan shelly scott up uh, blakey count basie ella ella and louis i've been listening to a fair bit because like um yeah I'll put it on when the kids are going to sleep and it calms them right down it is it is the those albums are just the perfect the perfect soundtrack to any situation <laughs> yeah really are um, I'm excited by the, like, as someone who uh, teaches a bit now, um, I'm excited by the next generations of musicians coming through. Like, um, they're very talented and they have a lot more resources than we do. You know, like, if if, if we were playing, um, you know, let's say we were at uni and we were learning St Thomas and the lecturer was like, okay, you have to listen to... Um, Oh, uh, what's the album called? Uh, ten, tenor. Tenor Madness? Uh, no. No, um, Saxophone Colossus. No. Saxophone Colossus, yeah. So everyone in that class would rush to the library to get <laughs> one copy of, of of Saxophone Colossus, whereas now it's like, oh, yeah, cool, look it up on YouTube. And that's that's cool as a teacher as well to be able to do that. Um, mm. So, um, but as well as, like, being amazing musicians, uh I, I think they're generally um, a more accepting people. Um, you know, I think when we were growing up, it was sort of okay to be a jerk, basically, and now people will call you out on stuff. Um, yeah. So they're more accepting, and I, I feel like they're going to make a more welcoming scene for people who aren't necessarily a stereotypical jazz musician like me. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, the scene is definitely... Well, most of the scene is more, uh, much more open to the, you know, mu- yeah, much more open now than it was when, uh, yeah, when I was at uni, for sure, which is only a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then I'm also excited by um, the things that I want to get better at. Um, so, like, playing standards, composing for um, big bands and, and large ensemble settings and, and using electronics there all things I'd like to improve on and like I'm uh, I get motivated by uh, the idea that I'll have, you know, one day the kids will be grown up and I'll have more time to explore that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, you sounds like you're going to be busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, thank I you. Think the cool thing about being a musician is that you never retire. There will, there will always be shit to do. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There's always, yep. You can never, ever be bored. Even if you're like, if you just want to be bored, <laughs> you never, you never can be. Uh, <laughs> oh, dream, dream to be bored. Yeah. Well, thank you, Gemma. Thank you for uh, spending the the time with me to answer those questions. And um, yeah, I'll get some uh, links of your music um, and put them below. Or do whatever the YouTubers do. Click below. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you 